Foot Clan, we got a great show for you today. We enter the Situation Room. We answer some questions about your fantasy drafts. Got a mailbag on today's show. Click like, click subscribe, enjoy the show. Hey, this is Darren Waller, tied in for the Las Vegas Raiders. I am the Wallerus, and you are listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Goo goo ka choo! Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Saturday, July 17th. Saturday, Saturday. The fantasy footballers, all three of us, back with you. You here, Jason? I am here, yes. All right. Yes, I am. We're all here. On a Saturday. <laughs> Very nervous for tonight's game. I'm so nervous, man. I want to explain something before we get into it. Lots to talk about today. We're going into the Situation Room, a new segment here on the Fantasy Footballers. We've got some mailbags, some NFL news, lots of fantasy talk. Don't worry, it's coming soon. But I do want to take you behind the curtain to Jason Moore and sports fandom and what we experienced on the shat- earth-shattering defeat of the Phoenix Suns on Thursday. <laughs> there, look, there, shat happened. <laughs> oh, oh man. yes, yes. So yes. <laughs> um, we were not together for this game, watching this game. All no, but but we're always kind of together because we're in the Slack channel and we're just complaining about the referees or doing things that really biased hometown fans do. Mm-hmm. That's part of basketball, right? Uh, but Jason was in another realm because we didn't think we could get him back on the peloton. But no, we found no, out that how. has been dead to me since I got it. Um, he he pulled all the old clothes he, that he were draped the, over it. Got the cobwebs off. Yeah, he plugged it back in. I could not handle this game from snap from the snap snap <laughs> snap <laughs> from one. the opening from snap the opening snap off. Um, <clears throat> I could not handle it. I I literally was about to die um, <laughs> watching okay. this game. So okay. I'm like, okay, I gotta go. I gotta go stress ride this peloton bike and it was the only time this is mike pointed this out watching that game and keep in mind the majority of the game we were up i think we were up like 80 percent of the game mm-hmm. and you know i did not have one second of positivity <laughs> or joy and there's no fun watching this game is just stress it's just non-stop complete freaking out worry like you can have a regular season game you can have fun even if you lose it Especially in basketball, when you play so many games, you're like, ah, that sucks that we lost. But no, I had fun watching it. It was, it was an experience. Hung out with the family, had some snacks. Not the and the, and the whole goal of the, of the of sports is to win the championship, but the finals are not enjoyable in the slightest. Well, when you win, they are. Yeah, those were at real the fun. end. Yeah, the after the win, and we did. So there's a game tonight. We'll all be there together. <sighs> So you'll see that on social media, and um, you probably never see us again if we lose. So, uh, so go Suns! <laughs> you can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers, thefantasyfootballers dot com. Check out all of the tools, resources, things to help you win your league, player profiles, the ultimate draft kit. Everything is over there on the website. All right, let's hop into the Situation Room. The Situation Room, Footballer's Edition. Into the Situation Room we go. In fact, Brooks, the other day, he brought up this idea to us that I really loved the the idea, the seed of the idea, which is that there are so many different scenarios you can find yourself in within your draft. There, uh, you know, it, it comes quickly, right? Everything is preparing for the draft. We try to equip you with our tools and resources. You've got all of your research, probably got your own spreadsheets. There's a lot that goes into the draft, and then... You know, as as Mike said earlier, um, stuff happens. Yes. <laughs> and you can be put in some awkward situations. So Brooks had brought up, you know, he wanted to throw us right into like a uh, a wild and crazy mock draft and have us kind of go through what we would do when put in those situations. And today he's bringing one of those forward. Yeah, it's like we're doing a mock draft and then we're getting a good old-fashioned Zach Morris timeout. Exactly. And so this situation – 
Um, well, here it is. You actually did it. Here's the situation. You used your first round draft pick on a tight end. His name is Travis Kelsey. Now what? Okay. How does that impact your decision making throughout the rest of the draft, the overall strategy? Uh, maybe you went into the draft and you thought this was a possibility, but you wouldn't get him. Like, I think a good example of that would be if you were in the 11 or 12 spot mm -hmm. and you figure, well, he's going at nine to this other teammate in my league. And then all of a sudden he's there and you don't know what to do. So you take him mm -hmm. and your whole plan, everything you mock drafted when you took uh, that other running back in the first round, it's gone. What do you do? So it, it, it definitely has an effect on how you draft the rest of the way. Um, I'm going to assume here that you got Travis Kelsey at near the one two turn, whether you're 11 or 12 or 10, you're, you're close together at the end of the first, at the beginning of the second, which means you are at the end of the third beginning of the fourth. And when I am looking at those picks to me, I have paired Kelsey with a running back. So on my one, two, uh, and if, if I either they, went they running back, nicely. they do pair nicely. It's, it's, it's like a, a filet and yeah. a nice, uh, Pinot I, Noir. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm going to, you know, personally, um, whether I went running back and got Kelsey early in the second or Kelsey and still the running backs, um, in the beginning of the second are good. You might get a Joe Mixon, an Austin Eckler, um, a player like that. If that's the case, then at the three, four turn, this is where I'm probably going to end up wide receiver, wide receiver, and not looking at running back for a little while. If Af after you've gotten the RB in the second, right? To clarify, okay. Un un yeah, I was a little. I got gotcha. you. So long as one of there are a f there are a handful of running backs that if they drop to the end of the third, I've seen it happen. They're not that's not their average draft price, but if a Clyde edwards alaire um, or a Najee Harris. One of those type of guys drops all the way to the back of the third, then I am willing to go running back there and then wide receiver. But what I'm not going to do personally, and I've I've talked about this before, I'm not going to be drafting like I love Kyler in the fifth. He's off my board because as I'm explaining what it looks like with your running back and wide receiver, you can already tell there's a hole somewhere. Either I'm not getting that other running back and I'm going to load up on wide receivers for a while, be a little bit weaker. Or if I don't do that, then I'm a little weaker at wide receiver. You take another quarterback, and now your positions where you've got running backs and wide receivers where you play multiple and you've got to have uh, bye week depth and injury depth and all that, that gets dicey. Mike, what if Patrick Mahomes falls to your pick in the third round and you have that temptation? Whoa. Look, I know you never want to take Mahomes. Or you right. just said this on the last show. But you have Kelsey on the roster. You end up with a great running back in the second round. You're so happy. And then Patrick Mahomes is there for the elite stack. I <laughs> – it, it, that would be extremely tempting because right? you're now – you aren't – you're not capping your upside – with with entering a week-to-week -week scenario where you have Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes, you are setting yourself up for a very high weekly ceiling. I mean, like when you're it's playing, a wonderful ride. Like, when you're playing, DF, I had that ticket last you year. You have this now, yeah. don't you? Yeah, I do. I think uh, I ended up in our keeper lottery. Yeah, I have both of those players. <sighs> that sucks. <laughs> it's funny. Okay, let's let's examine <laughs> let's examine this because that's true, right? Like, if you know anyone in your league with Kelsey. Mahomes, you're scared of them. Yes. You hate it. You know what that week looks like and how fun it is to have. Right. So why not just draft them? Right. I guess that's my point is that like, is there a, I'm just going for the fun here. Because it's like in a, in a heavyweight fight, that is, that's the, that's the, the, the boxer throwing the haymakers where when you build up a team with a strong foundation, you've got a strong body, you can absorb those shots. And you're more of a Floyd Mayweather because you're you're built for the distance. Is if as long as you can absorb uh, Travis Kelsey on any given week catching two touchdowns, and then Mahomes doing some other stuff. But I mean, it's like, you, did you win the championship last year in our league of record? With I that don't stack? think that's important. <laughs> I think <laughs> no, it's very you important. Did no, not. It, it, in fact, I've I've lost with Mahomes um, and a Kelsey stack and a Mahomes Tyreek stack. 
in the playoffs. Because the because you, you get a bad game, you get a down game, and obviously you're so dependent on those players. It's a wild and fun ride if it was Allen and Diggs last year through your championship, but it can go, you know, you're just obviously more eggs in one basket. Yeah, so personally speaking, I don't do that, but it's more of not that I don't want to have that stack, and I really don't blame people if they want to go with that strategy. It's in a single quarterback league, the replaceability of quarterback where I can get you know, 75% of Patrick Mahomes on any given week off of the waiver wire in a great, if, if someone happens to have a great matchup. So I, I still will pass on it personally, even though it is very tempting to head into the season with those guys and then just say, well, you know what? I'm going to figure out some other stuff in the season. Sometimes you can build that stack later through trades right, and deals that are larger where you're not paying the third round premium for Mahomes, but you are, uh, you're navigating it via trade. Brooks, is there anything from that situation that you still have questions about? Um, how about the elite tight end stack? Do you guys ever do that? Oh, you're gosh, saying more no. than one. No, yeah, that's never. a very common question. If you grab Kelsey, should you then go for Kittle no. and, or Waller so great, you great, have the elite tight ends? That is a great bad question, Brooks. Um, <laughs> never, ever, ever do that. I, I, I mean, tight end premium leagues, it's not a good idea to do that. You have to have uh, – the season, you know, assuming that this is a, a normal, you know, redraft keeper league like the majority of people play in – the season is a game of attrition, and the multiple position slots, you have to have depth there. You have to have the ability to play more guys there. When you draft a second player, he might score as much or more than other flex options, but that's the only place you could play him is your flex. You can't play both of those players in a in one of your main starting roster spots, so now all of your wide receivers take a massive step down and when you have the bye weeks, when you have all of those injuries that come throughout the season, now everything is just so shallow, and it's not worth that. If you really look at where those tight ends stack against great wide receiver options, exactly. they don't actually outscore the great wide receivers usually. They can they can sneak into the top ten, but in the third round, you can you have a an actual chance of drafting the number one. Wide receiver. I think Stephon Diggs was like a he was six, a fourth sixth round pick. Yeah, he was so, a sixth. So the, there are players in that area that have a decent probability shot of finishing as the overall number one wide receiver, where Darren Waller would have to have a historic of all historic years to finish in points per game, even with the wide receiver one. And then even still throughout the year, you're you're stuck. You were locked into that forever. <laughs> and it's funny because I've seen people do this mostly to taunt and then tantalize the league with right. trades. Yes. And it's like you bought tickets for a game you can't go to, <laughs> and you've got to try to unload them, and the price goes down further and further and further. Oh man. Oh uh, yeah. Don't draft players to trade them. No, it's not a good move. I mean, there's the occasional time when you know one. Maybe you know one manager in your league and you're like this guy it's a locked and loaded Maybe situation could, yeah if like it's in draft like you, you look at someone in the face and right. say, i am i am drafting stefan diggs right here so you if you want him you better trade with me right now that is okay yeah let's get into some news news and notes from around the league presented by sleeper Thursday was the deadline for franchise-tagged players to sign long-term deals, and Chris Godwin Allen Robinson did not sign long-term deals. Does this change the dynasty outlook for either wide receiver? I, I guess were you expecting the 25-year-old Godwin and 20, almost 28-year-old Robinson to sign? No, no. I think the, the common thought was that these guys were just going to be on a one-year deal and then hit the free agent market when the cap goes up significantly. So you're going to get a bag of money next year. This is... Um, more of a deal for like uh, Tyler Johnson, Jalen Darden, guys that ha maybe there is a future path once Chris Godwin is out of the way. Adding injury to the insult of dominating the league, Tom Ooh. Brady played through a fully torn MCL, required surgery following the Super Bowl. This guy. Um, 
man, I've been telling you guys, I've been watching that show alone mm-hmm. on History Channel where they like they put ten survivalists out in the middle of the Arctic all alone with cameras. They try to survive and win a million dollars. I'm not sure Tom Brady wouldn't take that thing home. <laughs> I mean, is he because he would sit down, crisscross applesauce? He would just go into some kind of plant trance. You, say, you already know he'd find the plants to eat out there. He'd know every single one of them. He would. He would have a, out of nowhere. There would just be some torp, some type of green force field around him, and he would sit there for a hundred days. And then you, and then he'd win, and then he'd go. Actually, I had gangrene in my foot the whole time. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. I mean, incredible. It it's really great this to be. This is why I love Tom Brady so much. This year, because he did that last year on because torn I just, MCL. What? No, I mean just because the I think the potential and value. Like I was on a show the other day and they asked my favorite values for the year and I had to say Tom Brady because his age it's will fair. stop him from moving forward in drafts. The hype around a Jalen Hurts it it's infinite. It can go in you know as high as can be. Yep. Uh, maybe they add some other wide out or something sexy, and then all of a sudden Jalen Hurts' hype is through the roof. Brady's will not go up. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. Brady and Ryan Tannehill, to me, are the two guys where whenever I think, when we're talking about the situation room, and I'm like, I'm bypassing Pat Mahomes or I'm bypassing uh, Kyler Murray, it, it, it's because there are guys like that at the back of the draft that are going to be great. And for those curious, our injury expert, Matthew Betts, has said, Essentially, he doesn't expect the injury to affect him. He should be good to go. It is fantastic to be an elite, immobile pocket passer. <laughs> I mean, you don't need an MCL if right. you're just going to stand there. Didn't Philip Rivers play an entire playoff On a game torn with a torn ACL? ACL? Yes. Yeah, he did. Yeah, it's, I don't it's recommend incredible. that to anybody. Um, I just love that we don't hear about this until now. That's the thing that's compelling too. Is like. This wasn't a storyline. He told nobody. He took care of his business. One that got the surgery. He's all better. Now you find out. Um, Ryan Fitzpatrick says he's built some chemistry with his pass oh, catchers. Man. Yes. Expects to spread the ball around this season. Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, the thing about Ryan Fitzpatrick is he has historically looked to his wide receiver core. Yep. Whereas last year in Washington specifically, Logan Thomas was the beneficiary of the – Alex Smith treatment. Yeah. And also a complete lack of a wide receiver core behind Terry McLaurin. Yeah. I mean, Curtis Samuel could be undervalued. He Cur- is. Curtis Samuel is on, on my short list of yes. my guys right now. I, I absolutely think I get him in almost every mock draft, every uh, draft that I'm doing, those middle to late rounds. It's just the the opportunity there and the path for him to actually be a really important fantasy player is alive where you could get him so late. And yeah, the, the other gap. guys. Uh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. The, the the gap of potential versus you know cost is enormous to me. And I was going to point out the gap between Terry McLaurin and Curtis Samuel. Like there is no partiality here for Ryan Fitzpatrick with McLaurin versus Samuel. Year one, building chemistry with all of them. Yes, we know the the upside of Terry McLaurin is there, but there's no reason why. I mean, in a, Curtis Samuel's gone out and produced at the NFL level. Then he got paid to come in. And he the gap has. is many, many rounds. Well, it, 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 I it, think it the, reminds me of Brandon Marshall was a way better player than Eric Decker. Yes. You exactly. know what I mean? Terry McLaurin is a is a better wide receiver uh, than Curtis Samuel. DJ but, Moore is probably a better receiver than Robbie Anderson, but it didn't matter for a lot of games last year. Right. Uh, they, they will be close enough to where the value gap is, is fantastic. I'm, and I'm in on both of these guys. Sure. I, I, and this is... I'm fa- I'm very happy where Terry McLaurin's ADP is. Uh, he is the the McLaurin situation this year is so incredible for fantasy, and thankfully he, his ADP has not gotten blown out of proportion yet by people like us and other fantasy football industry people out there. Hopefully he stays where he is, and you can get him because top five is in the realm of possibilities for Terry McLaurin. To me, he is an elite wide receiver, as in just tactician he gets open he creates separation he has elite athleticism he is when when he's out there he's one of the fastest guys on the field and then you combine that with an with a, a not an accurate quarterback what is the, a competent quarterback in Brian Fitzpatrick who frequently over targets his number one and number two option you have the the mixins of an incredible fantasy situation here for Washington I just want to know how much they use that passing game. 
that's still part of the equation with the elite defense, and you want Gibson to have a great breakout season too. So, well, to me, all of those things can come true. You have that offensive system is extremely pass happy in neutral game scripts. Would you agree with me though that there's a lot more risk to the uh, to the that situation than other teams? Because you would have Ryan to give Fitz, me a, co a well, comparison. A good well, Ryan Fitzpatrick never makes the playoffs. He frequently has down games. Um, he obviously was benched last year for a rookie that barely produced. Yeah. Like the risk, the risk factor is like we can look at every team for ten years and go, they're all dumb for not playing Ryan Fitzpatrick. But it doesn't really matter if there's a ten year pattern of that happening. Certainly, there's a chance is, that these two players don't have Ryan Fitzpatrick by week five. Uh yeah. Uh, except who's behind him? I mean, it's uh, what's his face, the guy who played the playoff game, and ever we all went crazy for. I can't believe his his name is escaping yeah escaping right. all three of us. Um, Hein Heine Heineke uh, Heineke yeah yeah uh, Taylor Heineke who did produce, but that's that's who's behind Ryan Fitzpatrick. I think that he is. I think he is safer in his starting job than you do right now. And it's, well, I it, just think he's a very up and down player. Yes, he he definitely is. And it's, I mean, this is all conjecture and stuff, but. Miami would have made the playoffs if they left Ryan Fitzpatrick as the starter last year. You cannot prove me wrong. <laughs> well, they were six and three with Tua, <laughs> ten and six, just bad luck. Um, yeah, I don't know about that. So uh, that was today's news and notes. Brought to you by Sleeper. Switch your league to the fastest growing fantasy platform today. They just added in some positional limits uh, to their platform, always improving and adding um, neat features, and that's what we love about Sleeper. Indeed, and before we move into the mailbag, I want to thank today's sponsor, Manscaped. Fellas, summer is coming. Are you ready to unveil your beach bod? Jason? Uh, <laughs> You're working not, on it. I'm working on it. Well, Manscaped can help get you there. Uh, our friends, they have just released the fourth generation performance package, which includes the Lawnmower 4.0. Never stop improving over there at Manscaped. You can bundle up with the Performance Package 4.0. You're going to get the Lawnmower 4.0, the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer. Fellas, you, you want to shut things down on the quickness? Have that ear and nose hair. It's nasty. You're looking bad. Get it out of there with the Weed Whacker. Uh, they have deodorants. They have Performance Boxer Briefs, a travel bag to hold all of that stuff together in the Performance Package 4.0. It's waterproof. It has a 4,000K LED spotlight on that lawnmower trimmer. It is the best body hair trimmer on the market. I I thoroughly enjoy all of my Manscaped gear. It helps keep my beach body ready, Jason. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I'm, I'm legit a big fan of the equipment. It is fantastic stuff. And right now you can get 20% off and free shipping with the code FOOTBALLERS at Manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code FOOTBALLERS at Manscaped.com. Escape the shrubs and weeds this summer and shine with Manscaped. And don't forget, as we get closer and closer to fantasy football season, and you are a listener of the Fantasy Footballers podcast. That means Wait you're going to win it. Are you reminding me of something? Am I that gonna... I'm the champion? Oh shoot! Of our dynasty? No, league? no. He was talking to me, as I am the champion of the of the league. No, of guys. I was talking us... to Mike and I, as we are the champions yeah! of the other dynasty. Everyone's league. Everyone's a champion. We need to go to fantasychamps.com before the deal ends to get the free fifty nine dollar championship ring. If you get a trophy or you get a belt, a championship belt, you, all that swag that you want, that nay you deserve, go to fantasychamps.com, buy your trophy, buy your belt. And add one of your favorite, just whatever championship ring you want to the cart. Put in the code free ring and boom, bam. Guess boom, what you bam. get? A free championship ring. You're going to love it. Everybody who's ever gotten it says these things are amazing. You'll love it. Go to fantasychamps.com. Promo code free ring. All right. Shall we journey into the mailbag? Yes. Mailbag. Mailbag. Yeah. I guess that's the answer I wanted. It was just so simple. So easy. Don't overthink it sometimes. Go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. If you have a question for the show, you can click the submit a question button. You can also dial our voicemail hotline 302-464-TFFB. We'll start this mailbag off with a voicemail. 
Okay, guys, I was wondering, do I keep C.D. Lamb for a 10-rounder, or do I keep Antonio Gibson for a four? Oh. Thanks, man. Oh. Yeah, I, uh, I'll take oh, C.D. Lamb man. for a 10-rounder, final answer. Oh, oh, man. That is really, really tough. I think the best way to do this. I need this, update ADP on this. Yeah, the, 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 the best way to do this is really look at what the alternatives are, okay? So um, in the 10th round. Well, you, you can't completely do it because it is a keeper league, so you're going to have some variables in your ADP. Sure, but I'm just saying in, in general for value. If you're going to say, okay, well, what's who am I giving up in as a fourth rounder in general in most leagues? If I keep Antonio Gibson for a fourth, what am I sacrificing? What players are in the fourth round? And, that I'm, And right now Gibson is a second round uh, player. Right, so both of these are great values. Yes. I would love to keep both, but obviously you have to give up a fourth round pick if you do keep Gibson. Right now, guys going You know in, who you need to be giving up? CeeDee Lamb, who is a fourth round pick. What is going on with CeeDee Lamb's ADP? I told you, man, people are already, they've cashed the ticket. Yeah. Uh, uh, DJ Moore is in the fourth round. Right now, Kyler sneaking up there. Amari Cooper is also in the fourth round. Julio Jones. Would you rather have Julio Jones and CeeDee Lamb or uh, Antonio Gibson and a later round wide receiver like, uh, you know, maybe you get a value on um, – Cortland Sutton. I was, what I'm, what I need to throw in the, the argument though, what I was talking about, it it's a one keeper. So looking at teams, there's going to be a high probability. A lot that of running backs. A lot kept. of the running backs are going to be gone, and you're getting a very does, a very strong that does value. Persuade me a little bit. A strong value for a guy who was a top twelve running back last year. They're talking him up of getting him more involved in the passing game, uh, and really upping that workload for Antonio Gibson. If that happens, then you're, I think top 12 is your floor. I totally hear what you're saying. I still think I'm going to go CD lamb. I, I, I think the value is too good. And a fourth rounder, even in a keeper league, if it's a one keeper, so it's basically a fifth rounder. Those are still pretty valuable picks to get a free CD lamb. I'm taking Gibson. Makes sense. Did you change your mind there, Andy? I mean, he's right about the round exchange for the rookie or for the running back position. Do so, some detective work and see if you can find out who else is being kept. Yeah, I mean that probably persuades me into Gibson because it's still a value on him, and there's probably not going to be a similar running back of any any sort in the fourth round of your draft. So I think I just thinking of our league and the way that that pans out with keepers. Obviously, it's only one keeper. Um, I think that persuades me into Gibson. It's a very close race there. So, uh, there's no wrong answer between two great options, though. Congratulations. Yes, I think I know why I can't get as behind Gibson or like Fitzpatrick or some of these Mike hype picks. Why? I thought you were going to tell us. Yeah, he well, just. I, I figured it out. <laughs> yeah, I just. I'm happy I figured it out. <laughs> no, it's because I like. I I I just think that there are like two sides to that, and you're so excited about Gibson that I never hear you say the wrong side. I never hear you say what might go wrong for Gibson or might oh, go I, wrong for Terry McLaurin it, or wrong for Fitzpatrick. That's fair. Uh, uh, honestly, when I'm when I'm comparing the two players, I have more confidence in Terry McLaurin producing at a high level this year. Things for like Antonio Gibson way overproduced in the touchdown area last year. So if you have if that offense stagnates and that offense doesn't actually improve. Move into Ryan Fitzpatrick from uh, the Dwayne Haskins slash Alex Smith team, uh, then you then you will have a problem with Antonio Gibson because there, uh, I don't think you see as much volume of uh, of passes going to the running back. Where I'm where I still believe it will be okay is because I think that the overall offense gets better. But that is that is my projection for the team. So if they if they don't actually improve, then yes, there will be a situation where Antonio Gibson is disappointing. I'll be rooting for him. I want to see them win that division again. And they're going to get renamed next year. You heard that, right? I did. The official. Yes. Here's here's a great follow-up question. Keeping the colors, too. Great follow-up question just to, to put a, n some numbers on it from uh, Brett Janke. Antonio Gibson, what's his floor? What's his ceiling? I have – I think his ceiling is RB3. His floor is RB23. I think his ceiling is RB – 
eight, and I think his floor is probably RB24. I'd side more with Jason's numbers. All right. Um, Instagram question from Sawyer Shaw. In a dynasty league, full blow it up rebuild mode. Would you trade or hold Mark Andrews if you're in that oh, boat? Oh, wow. He's probably a trade to me. If you're in full blow it up mode, um, I would probably move him. It's tough. He's 25 years old, which is pretty young for a tight end, right? I mean, we see a he's, lot of these. He's got to be due for a contract, right? Um, yeah, yeah. He's he's. Uh, I'll, I'll bet he gets extended this year. Um, you know, I he had a. I think most people view Mark Andrews as having had a down year. Um, I've had a lot of questions lately on uh, if I'm in a rebuild, do I trade player X? And I I gen generally tend to go well how is their value right now did they peak last year and they're great and you can get a lot for them or are they maybe down below what the talent of the player is worth and I think right now Mark Andrews is a little undervalued he is a little undervalued and so I might hold him um because he's still good for a rebuild it's because it's young. just funny like he had five top five performances at the tight end position in the first 11 weeks so 50% of those games he he dominated for your team at the run at the uh tight end position. Yeah. But it did feel weird because Lamar felt weird. The offense felt weird. You missed game due to injury. Um and you had Waller that was super consistent and Hawkinson did pretty well. So I think that there was a little luster came off of Mark Andrews' future last year for some reason. Yeah, and it was I mean he still in games played was over seeing over 24% of the targets. And I, I mean, this is just has to be a psychological thing of we, we talk a lot about how a player does at the beginning of the year. That's your, a lot of your, your core memories built about how that player did that season are formed right then because the attention is at its maximum and your, your excitement is at its peak and week one, he was the number one guy, but then he crushed you weeks two and week it was three, extreme. and then you had a three pack of games uh, six or week six, eight, and nine. There was a bye week in the middle of there where he also crushed you. So there, I think that is that's that's uh, melting he will people's. Do, uh, he will do that, him. and he even did yeah, that. Sure, he, that's his mo. Like he's not Kelsey or Waller. He's not volume. He's touchdowns. Even in his elite breakout season, it was sixty four receptions. The, we came into the year going. What if his target share goes up and, you know, then he got hurt and he missed a couple extra games, so those numbers would have been about the same. Um, so I, I think that he's so, just a different weapon and he's probably undervalued. And what was his pace? I mean, his pace last year was 72 for 965 and 11. That's dominant. Yeah, that's, that's great. great. You had, So Darren Waller had five games outside of – with, with my quick math, five games outside of the top 15. Well, Mark Andrews had six. Yeah. Like, Mark Andrews was consistent, but those the, the bombs that he dropped were were devastating weak records. And there was, weak a, records. there was a weird cloud on that team in the first yes. 11 weeks. Yes. Um, Vopo on Instagram writes in, why is Brooks' alter ego 54-year-old actor Paul Giamatti? <laughs> <laughs> In fact, there are lots of questions about that. Obviously, it it's really because he is Paul Giamatti. Yeah. It's, oh man, it's just um, if you've seen him, you know. Yeah, a lot he of looks times identical to fifty-four-year-old actor Paul Giamatti. I mean, when we are physically, out, usually we get stopped, and it, it's uh, you know you would think it's for the three of us. Yeah, but it's actually they go, Paul. Have you Paul ever is, seen Paul Giamatti and Brooks? In the same room at the same time. I have never <laughs> once never, seen that. I have not because uh, I haven't. Uh, on those grounds, though, you might be Paul Giamatti. Oh crap! <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, I think what one, happened? One day, uh, it was it was a question about once who would a time. who would play so and so in different, you know, in a in a in a movie about us. And I think Andy just you know clearly pegged. Paul Giamatti as as a dead ringer for I, I think he intentionally was trying to besmirch the name of Brooks. You think? Do you think you think fifty four I mean, year old actor Paul Giamatti? Paul Giamatti. Well, a phenomenal I mean, actor. We also we hung up a really 
unforgettable large glossy That's Brooks, photo right? <laughs> of Paul Giamatti above his head while we record the show. It's got to be his worst photo. It, yeah, it, it's yeah. got to be the world's <laughs> worst photo. And he's like kind of watching out for you and over you every day. Do you feel his comforting gaze and also gaze. also the not sweat? A comforting gaze. Can sweat drip off that photo onto you? Yeah, I don't feel much comfort from that behind me. Okay. And what was the movie? That was he looks kind of like sideways. No, that was Paul Giamatti. That was, was that a different him. Era? Um, oh, in jail. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, that picture. Is. That photo of Paul Giamatti was a press photo where he forgot to put the powder on. Oh uh, yeah. And yeah. Um, oh, you always got a powder. Yeah, that up. flash turned up a little high. Pro tip out there. Keep the powder on, especially yeah. if your name is 54-year-old actor Paul <laughs> Giamatti. Uh, so there you go. We we have a lot of fun with the employees and yes. personnel here on, on staff. That's why Danny DeVito. Oh, yeah, Al. What is Al Borland? So handsome. How do you how do you how do you feel now that he's Danny DeVito? I'll take G, I'll take G <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, let's go. Oh, well, we got a follow up. Someone wants to know how Mike got dubbed the fantasy hitman as well. <laughs> All right, and it's jump in. It's not a it's not a very interesting story uh, comparatively to to most nicknames, and it all rules were shattered for this. But back when Andy and I were starting the podcast and we're trying to figure out names and, you know, the fantasy footballers, a couple other were floated out. Uh, one of the names floating around was the fantasy hitmen. It's like, I, I kind of like that. But we ended up going with fantasy footballers, of course. And then early in on the run, I think we're like three episodes in and, all, and Andy has to miss an episode already. Because the show was really, really important to, <laughs> to what we were doing. Our lunch hour once a week at our day job. But anyway, so I had someone else come in and be the co-host. It really was just was me hosting the show. So I, as as I tend to do, turn into a buffoon, and I'm just I'm doing whatever I want to do. And then I start demanding halfway through the show that my co-host start referring to me as the fantasy hitman. And that's and, it. And then when Andy came back, every time he would introduce us, you know, it's we uh, Andy and Mike. And I'll go, oh, uh, Andy, that's Mike, the fantasy hitman. And Andy, and it would just get on his nerves so much the that, thing. that I had to keep doing it. And it, so it turned in, like, like everything on this show, it was a bit of me correcting him every single like time. Like 54-year-old actor Paul Giamatti. Yeah. Yeah. And then it then it just eventually it gets out of the state of being a bit and just becomes part of the canon. Now you're known as the fantasy hitman. Yeah. Congratulations. We did it. Jose wants to know who will stand out most in the 49ers passing game. Brandon Ayuk. George Kittle. Um. Yeah, I, I mean, I would go George Kittle. But if you if the question is out of the wide receiver core, I would go Brandon Ayuk. So I love your guys' answers. I agree. I feel like I got tricked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Instagram question: How do I convince my league to switch to PPR? I don't want to. Uh, they don't want to because it makes irrelevant players more relevant. I feel like it that, would make what? it would make teams more competitive. This is not good because my entire argument for going to a half or a full PPR is that it makes more players relevant but if you're if your league's argument against it I have it, seen this with certain players why? like a like a Hunter Renfro has a greater value in fantasy in a PPR than he ever has on the field for the Raiders would be an example yeah, some Cole Beasley that's maybe why you go to half PPR Yeah I was just going to say that I mean the half PPR is that sweet spot where um, it, PPR you you could you could easily win an argument is is possibly more fun, but half PPR yeah, much higher scores. Uh, yeah, more uh, it's more, more scoring, more players that can be relevant. But half PPR is a really really nice balance where it, it feels like what is happening on the field is accurately being rewarded. Um, in fantasy and um, it, it doesn't overblow in either direction. So I, I, I love half PPR. That's, that's our format of choice. All right. Instagram question. Whose ADP do you expect to be much higher by draft day or the start of the NFL season? Um, the first name that I would think of is Javante Williams. We had, we had just covered the, the AFC West and his current ADP is fantastic to me where I would be scooping him up in all best ball drafts that I could. But, by the time training camp rolls around 
and we get more confirmation. Either way, I, I think he'll end up being hyped up by the, the beat reporters in Denver. He will move up probably into that fourth round range where it couldn't get it can get kind of dicey and feel more like uh uh David Montgomery's rookie year where he was chilling out in that round six to seven area and then the rookie hype really set in. Yeah, he jumped up pretty quick. I feel like it's gonna be Travis Etienne, um, another rookie running back okay. in the sense that right now his value is low, the news out of camp is all pro James James Robinson and yada yada, but when the rubber meets the road and preseason games are happening and you watch some electric cut that he makes on the field, I, I think he's just going to skyrocket as people realize he's the better running back for this team. And uh, Chase Edmonds from Arizona, as we could have more clarity, it, maybe we won't, but hopefully we have more clarity. Is he Is he really the guy? for Arizona now, or is is he going to keep the role that he was in last year and James Conner is going to kind of come in and be that first and second now grinder? YouTube from Blake, question, what pick in the first round should the first wide receiver be selected? Okay. That's actually, it's kind of muddy this year compared to previous years. Like, it's not... Be because of Devontae Adams and Aaron Rodgers? Well, I, I guess that factors in, but even if you threw Tyreek, like, let's say you took... Devonte Adams off the board, and you said, "Hey, where, where does Tyreek go?" I feel like you have a very sure one and two, right, with McCaffrey and Dalvin Cook, and then I feel like the next batch is in kind of an assortment of orders. It's Kamara, it's Henry, it's Saquon. Are you taking Zeke Travis Kelsey before you take a wide receiver? Yeah, I think I am too. Yeah. So let's let's run through the names. But that's different. I don't think that's normal. I think the normal person is going to take the wide receiver at seven. And Kelsey's a 9-10. But I'm with you. I would do that. All right. So Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook, Henry, Kamara, yeah. Barkley. I think we can all agree we would take those guys before a wide receiver, right? Yes. Yes. Johnny Taylor. No, I'd take Taylor. I would I would take the wide receiver ahead of Taylor. Yeah, you have but done But there that. are other okay, running backs. We'll get, yeah, okay. Chubb. Taylor. Or <laughs> <laughs> I would take Wait the wide, a minute. I would take the wide receiver. I would take Chubb. Okay, so Andy's up to six. Zeke. I would take Zeke. I'd probably take Zeke. Okay. Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones, and we know that Aaron Rodgers yeah, no, is going to be it. there. Um, that's my wide receiver spot. Okay. Yeah, or I guess my Kelsey spot. Okay. If we know Aaron Rodgers is there, I'll take Aaron Jones. So, I mean, we're talking back, back of the first. Yeah, I mean, we've seen him higher in years past. Michael Thomas was what, like five on average last yeah. year? Yeah. One wild card running back here for you, Jason. Cam Akers. Oh man, I, it's, dude, that's the one name I, I didn't want to. I, I didn't want. I'm looking at my own rankings and I'm going down through the list and I'm sitting there saying, I, I think I would pull the trigger on Austin Eckler. I have before Austin Eckler. wide receiver. Yeah, before okay. a wide receiver, I have Austin Eckler one spot behind Cam Akers. But man, to, to, I don't know that I could. <laughs> I mean, the reality is, my stats say I think Cam Akers ends the season better. But of course, these are linear stats. The risk rating on Kim Akers is way higher than on Austin Eckler. The risk, I just, a first-round risk like that is really scary to me. Um, so Cam will be a little bit lower on my draft order than he is on my end-of-season rankings here. Your simultaneous love and fear of Cam Akers brings me such <laughs> brings joy, you joy to it watch gives you talk you life about it to... every time. <sighs> All right, YouTube question. Uh, let's go with this one. JK writes in, how do you guys decide, how did you decide on that banging intro song? <laughs> Not much of a story here. I, I He had, made it, I had, and then I said, that sounds good. I had done a soundtrack for uh, a horror movie. Uh, years, I remember that. Years back. and You never made any money off of that, did you? I look. I I paid like a month's worth of rent from it. Oh, did you? Yeah. So we did all right. Maybe I was, I was thinking of a video game you did a soundtrack for. Oh yeah, I've, I've, there's plenty of those, <laughs> but the exposure was great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, I I had I had written that for the movie, and we were doing just our league podcast. So I threw together an intro with that on there, and and I was like, hey, how's this? And he was like, yeah, sounds good. So. Yeah, it's so it was not even written for this show, which no. I love. That it's just like, oh yeah, yeah. So 
when you I got this I, thing. don't you remember I brought my song and then we compared and we we're like, man, which one's better? And then yeah, it was really close. And then you we went, had to we like with yours. We had to do a blind poll. <laughs> but it's, it's so when you see, uh, it, no, I'm not. If you want to go find the movie, it's it you'll be able to find it. I'm not going to talk about it on the show, but it's really weird. Because I've gone yes, back and watched I it. I have too. And I'm like, it's so out of context. What is happening? That's weird. Yeah, because now that <laughs> yeah, music I've, means our show. I've heard it thousands of times. And you watch that trailer and you're like, why? Wait, we, this we don't is know so royalties, right? Oh, no. No, I cleared it. All right, good. Uh, Instagram question uh, Keeper League. Would you keep Justin Jefferson or Saquon Barkley? Saquon. Saquon. Yeah. Um, Favorite stadium snack? Nicole wants to know. Ooh, that's an excellent question as we're going to the stadium. It is easily a giant hot dog. and I That's do, a snack? That is the true answer. to the, That is my snack. <laughs> that is my go-to snack. So what's, the your, hot dog. what's your go-to meal? Oh, my, also go, a hot, my go-to meal is, is, two pre, hot dogs. is pre-game. Uh, okay. So like before the but game that, starts, I go to a restaurant. That's a cheap. And then I get which, to the stadium and I get a hot for dog. For the record. Is my plan. We found out that we're going to the game, and there's some. There's already food figured out. Yeah, and uh, we were originally going to go and get dinner, and then go to the game. And Jason has informed me he's planning on just keeping the dinner reservation, and then eating dinner again at the game. Let me ask you this: Why would you eat once when you can eat twice? <laughs> I don't know why these LPs don't fall away. <laughs> just can't figure why it you out. Have a tummy ache. Um, oh, I will. I oh, will, for okay. sure. Don't you worry. Just, you just live with that? Just power through. That's something, my you know, secret. They- <laughs> <laughs> it always hurts. <laughs> oh, I was told once, no pain, no gain. And okay. so I have gained a lot. <laughs> Both You've seasons. pushed through. What's your favorite snack, Andy? <sighs> hey, man, any place has got a giant cookie, I'm in on that. A cookie. I'm a nacho man. Really? Not <laughs> <Nacho> <laughs> man. Uh, uh, but yes, I I love nachos, especially as a. Do you find like the cheese snack. variable to be a problem for your endeavors? Not anymore, because now it's always in the. It's in, all the same. It's all pre-prepared. It's not a. It's not the nacho cheese machine anymore. Or if you're in a stadium, not they don't always have them. But I know that at least in the Cardinal Stadium they have them. If you're out for a, a quick jaunt, yeah, and you get hit in the face with those uh, the the roasted nuts, the uh, <laughs> oh the, yeah, the, the candied ones. Oh, I yeah. know what you're talking oh, about. Oh man, <laughs> you, you good luck making it through that you that, that scent without buying any. So if you get hit in the face with them, yep. All right, um, got it. <laughs> I recommend Do you dodging. like your nacho <laughs> cheese with the uh, like pudding film on top of it. You know, you can get the nacho cheese. Sometimes it comes with that. It oh, ends up by the time you get to that's your seat, the name of the game. Now. You got to break through the top. Yeah. Also, I don't. I don't do jalapenos. I'm not. I'm not in on that. No, I'm not either. I bet Jason is. No, 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 no. I, I don't. I'm not. I'm not a super spice guy. Do you do nachos? Yeah, I like nachos. <laughs> okay. I, mean, I love wait, that. You're talking about tortilla chips and cheese, right? Yes. Yes. Nachos. Yeah, I'm in. Okay. Instagram question: Which players will you not draft now, but trade for in the middle of the season? Oh, quarterbacks, a lot of times. I mean, Mike pulled this with Lamar Jackson last year. You want to talk about uh, getting uh, Patrick Mahomes. I might not draft him, but I'll trade for him uh, after a couple of bad games. Um, And rookie wide receivers. I'm not drafting Jamar Chase. I'm not drafting uh, a lot of these guys. But if they have a bad start to the season and I can get them for pennies on the dollar in week four, I will. All right. I think that's going to wrap it up, fellas. We did it. Jason's got to get prepared for dinner one, dinner two. Oh, that's right. Got my gas dinner sex one, already. Let's go. <laughs> Man, I just never, I never know how much of, of our personal relationship to share on this show. But, <laughs> but I will say, I mean, you brought that up and I went to dinner with you before the mm-hmm, game and mm-hmm. you preload, he preloads a gas sex. Um, he so preloads wait, it. Normally two. Preloading. Yeah, you got to pre, you got to They were shovel. They were trying to. Him and his wife are trying to push me into a gas station uh, before yeah. my meal. Should have had it. Like a drug dealer on the <laughs> corner. We open our uh, you trench coats and oh gas yeah. X. Well, I mean, you got to be prepared for what it, could possibly I, happen. <laughs> How many farts do you have? Less. <laughs> Infinity. <laughs> I mean, I can't burp. If I could burp, maybe I wouldn't have. You to. really go double double gas X? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's is that the, recommended? That is recommended by a doctor. By the package <laughs> before before the meal, though. Those aren't after. Those are preloads. Yeah. 
<laughs> Man, I'm learning new things, Mike. We've got to uh, get the life insurance figured out around here. <laughs> yeah, we All do. right, that'll do it for the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in, supporting the show. Join the community at jointhefoot.com, and we'll see you there. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.